I was born in Israel. I grew up as a religious Orthodox Jew. Uh, I never heard the name Jesus. Jesus wasn't a thing where I grew up. Uh, and I was okay for 22 years. <laughs> up until the day I got from the high rabbinical judge court uh, this letter that says, Dean, you might not be a Jew anymore. And I thought to myself, maybe it's other thing. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it, it was me, and it was for my sister as well, my brothers as well, my mother, and all the way up till my great-grandma who was, uh, who was actually a Jew uh, in Auschwitz. And she fled from the Nazis, and she went all the way to Euro uh, all around Europe, and she, then she ended up in, uh, in Israel, before the State of Israel was founded. And then they asked her, okay, what is your religion? And she thought to, my, to herself, I don't know, maybe the Arab will win the independence war, and then they will kill all the Jews. And I didn't run away from Hitler to, be, to die here. So she said she is a Christian. In her mind, uh, if the Arab will win, they will just kick her out back to Europe. And that's fine. She will get to live another day. So all of a sudden, the rabbis, after 70 and more years, the notification of us not being a Jew or her declaring she's not a Jew pops up. And now she, they declared we're not a Jew anymore. And we had to prove our Judaism. And at court, they didn't let us talk. They just said, you're not a Jew. She said so. Boof. Bye. That's it. And so if you want to uh, prove it, then you have to go to court again and, and order whatever. And so my sister and my auntie went all the way to Europe and search uh, of her trail going from Auschwitz to all of the, the places where she, uh, she fled to find out maybe she has a Jewish uh, um, passport, maybe she has something that says she, and declares that she is a Jew. But I was 22 and I just finished my service time in the army and I did what every other people does in the army, after the army. I went to South America, that's what we all do. And so, and so it was only the, the first week and I was in, in uh, Ecuador Understanding and, and, and knowing that I'm not a Jew anymore was so burdening upon me. It was like weights and weights upon me. And I couldn't stand it. And we went on this hike, and there was a big lagoon, lake. So, And I just thought to my friend, I, I, I was telling him, Yoni, just go away. I need, I need time for myself now. And I sat there, and I never thought I'm going to speak with God. I never planned it before. And actually, I never spoke with God. And I know I told you I was a religious guy, and I did pray three times a day, but the prayer we used to do, or I used to do, is nothing like what you think as a prayer. Prayer in Judaism is like talking to Santa with a grocery list that he has to fulfill. That is no connection. That is no relationship with God. So this is why I say I never talked to God up until this moment. And so I did, I did talk to him, and I said, why do you do that to me? Why, oh, why do you kick me out of your people? You know my blood. I'm more Jew than Mordecai the Jew. So why do you do that to me? I couldn't, I couldn't get it. And then I start to be furious about, uh, towards God. And I said, maybe you're not exist. Uh, I don't need you. Maybe all, only the old people need you. Before they die, they want salvation. They want happy ending, right? I don't need you. I'm young. But I always knew God exists. I always felt it. I never questioned it in my life. So I said, well, I don't know, but I do know you're there. So I want you to come here. I want you to explain everything. I want you. And he did. <laughs> All of a sudden, I, I feel those waves coming upon me. I wasn't in the water, right? <laughs> and I feel those waves coming towards me and touching me. And then I hear a voice in my head that isn't mine. And it says, Dean, why are you coming after me? Don't you get it? All those things are not from me. I'm not the one who does those things to you. And I started shaking like crazy. I, I thought I lost my mind. <laughs> 
Because my father always said, if you talk to God, that's called prayer. And that's what religious guys do. But if God talks to you, you are... <laughs> he actually... It, 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 you're laughing at it right now, but uh, it's very sad that my father thinks this way and lives this way. And so... I was trembling. I was thinking I lost my mind. And it's only been a week. I didn't do drugs. I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I wasn't even in high elevation. <laughs> I didn't have excuses for what happening. But he saw it. He saw me uh, like afraid. And all of a sudden, I feel this warm, big hug around me. And he said, don't worry. And all of a sudden, whoosh. All my worries went away. I felt great. And then he says, don't worry, I'm coming to you. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> that is very scary, God. And so I went back to my hostel. And I'm a slow walker. And I walk even slower that time. And I was like, I was trying to figure out what happened. But nothing came to my mind. And so I, I went to the hostel, I met my friend, and he was like, Dean, where have you been? It's like 9 o'clock, I thought I lost you, I thought you, I was calling the cops, but I didn't know Spanish. And so I tried to tell him, Yoni, you know what, I met God. But when I tried to speak, I felt like choking. <sighs> Nothing came out of my mouth, I couldn't speak. So I was taking a cold shower, nothing came out of my mouth. So at the time, I was writing my journal. Uh, my, you call it the journal, right? Diary? And so I was writing in it, and I thought to myself, then just write down the experience you had, so tomorrow you can explain better, and you can remember better. But the only thing I was able to write down was the name Yeshua, which is Jesus' name in Hebrew, right? But I didn't know it was a name at the time, because growing up religious, you never heard the name Yeshua or Jesus. You, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not connecting to you. And so I didn't know what to do with it, so I just went to sleep. And the next morning, when I woke up, I told my friend all about this crazy experience I had. And then I told him, well, Yeshua, what does it mean? And he's an ex-religious guy as well. And he said, I don't know, maybe, maybe Joshua, because it sounds similar. Yeshua, Yehoshua. I said, no, 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 Yoni, it needs to be Yeshua. I don't know, maybe salvation, uh, Hebrew, Yeshua. I said, no, Yoni, lo Yeshua, it's Yeshua. Then you just came up with a word, I don't know, you went crazy. <laughs> Let's continue with our trip, come on. And so we did, we actually went all South America, we had a wonderful time for six months, and then we got back to Israel. One, of the, uh, one day I was on my computer, reading, uh, was on Facebook, reading this post, but there was another post which has a video in it, and I didn't mute it for some reason. But I wasn't listening to the video, I wasn't looking at it, I, I was in the middle of reading the, the, the next post, right? But all of a sudden, I hear Yeshua, and something clicked in my mind, and I was like, okay, that sounds familiar. So I stopped reading this uh, post, and I went to the other post, and I rewind the video, started, starting it from the, the beginning, and I started watching it, and it was about the most famous Jewish guy who changed the world. And I was like, okay. And then they were speaking about him being um, uh, healing people, taking care of the sick. And I was like, okay, we have this one rabbi who called uh, Rambam, and he was a known doctor. And maybe they're speaking about this rabbi, right? That sounds logic. And then... The video continue, and they say, you might think it's the Rambam, but it's not. <laughs> okay, that's strange. And so I kept on watching, and then they were talking about this guy fulfilling the prophecies of Messiah. And it was fishy. So for me, it was like, okay, when I was in, in South America, uh, I, I met those people who are ultra-Orthodox Jews, who believes their rabbi to be the Messiah, the Rabbi Melubavitch. Uh, and so I had great talk with them, and they're very uh, friendly people. They try to share their gospel, so they're very friendly people. So 
I know about their ideology, so I thought to myself, well, maybe it's those guys, the Rabbi Melubavitch guy, right? If you know the, the Haredic people, the ultra-Orthodox from New York, they're probably those guys. And so I thought to myself, well, is this rabbi? And then the video continue, and then they say, you might think of the Rabbi Melubavitch, right? But it's not. And I was like, what is this video? <laughs> he knows everything. <laughs> A little pause from the story. As I said, I went back to Israel. I was in Israel at the time. And my auntie and sister already went all over Europe and actually found the evidence that we are Jew. And then we went back to court and uh, provided enough evidence to be considered Jew back again. So in my mind, I'm clear, I'm good, <laughs> right? And so back to the video, now they say, well, it's not the Rambam and it's not the Rabbi Milubavitch. You might have heard of, about this guy. He's called Yeshu, Jesus, the Christian guy. And I was like, oh, no. I closed all the tabs in my internet. I look upon the heaven and said, God, I thought we were okay. Why did you have to bring the Christian guy again? I didn't know what to think because I thought I, I received my Judaism back again. So why do I need the, the Christian guy, right? I was furious. I hated the idea that this guy might be the, the, the Messiah. I never knew the Christian people considered Jesus to be the Messiah because they never teach you. They never talk about him. They never even call him by his own name. They call him Yeshu, not Yeshua. And Yeshu is the initials for uh, may his name will be erased and forgotten because they're not allowed to say his name. They did a wonderful job keeping him from us. And so I was furious, but I never heard those good things about Jesus in my life before. So I said, okay, I'll uh, order the New Testament to my house and I'll read the New Testament along together with my Old Testament and I'll prove that Jesus is wrong, that he came up with this new uh, religion that says let's kill the Jews and whatever, inquisitions, all the stuff they teach you about Christianity is wrong, right? And all, all I knew is Jesus walked upon the water and the Christian people believe in him. That's it. That's how little people in Israel know about Jesus. That's how sad it is. And so I ordered the New Testament and I didn't know that, but at the time, Jews for Jesus were the one to send it to me. And so first night came in and I was opening, uh, I was opening the book and it was Matthew 1. And all of a sudden I feel the same presence, the same wave back again. And he took his hand, so to speak, and, and he put it around me, like hugging me and say, read, it's about me. And I was reading the whole thing. Like, it took me like two, two weeks and I read the whole thing. And then I was in big problem because I was the only Jew who believes in Jesus. They don't teach you there are other Jews who believe in Jesus. It's not even an option for us to believe in Jesus. Like, for all you care, uh, you can be a Buju, uh, like Buddhist Jew. You can be New Age, which is old age Hinduism Jew. You can be a Muslim Jew. You consider a Jew. But if you turn and look upon this guy, Jesus, you're no longer a Jew. That's the true fact in Israel. So, for us, Jesus is not even an option, right? So all I've done for, for the time being was reading the prayers, Lord, um, the Lord's Prayer uh, at evening. And then I had a later section where I speak with him. But now I don't have a wish list for him to fulfill. Now I ask for his will and what his will. And I want to done his will, to do his will. So a couple of months went by and the guy who sent me the New Testament calls me and say, hi, Dean, my name is Aviel. I sent you the New Testament. Have you read it? And I was like, yes. Uh, where have you been? <laughs> and he said, don't worry. Uh, usually takes like two months to people to, to read the whole New Testament. And you just happen to do it in two my weeks. So, so do you want to talk about it? And I said, yes, of course. And then we met at this cafe. And he explained to me that I'm not the only Jew who believes in Jesus. And then he said, Dean, there is actually a congregation next to your house. Do you want to go there? 
And I said, yes, to meet brothers and sisters, of course. And so he gave me a contact number of this lady from the congregation, and she get my number, and then she sent me a text. Okay, it's in this and that address, and that and that time. Uh, are you coming? And I said, yes. But I didn't. <laughs> and then a week uh, went by, and she sent me again the text, and she said, Dean, uh, it's in, in Sabbath, 10 o'clock in the morning. Are you coming? Yes, of course. I didn't. A week, a week went by, and I didn't. A week went by, and I didn't. And she all the time sent me those texts. Are you coming? I said, yes, but I didn't. And then she thought I might be afraid of a lot of people. So she said, okay, we have this thing that's called a home group. It's a smaller group where we meet up and we pray and we um, do Bible study. Do you want to, to, to come? And I said, yes. And she sent me the address and she sent me the, the time, right? And I said, I'm coming, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> To cut a long story short, I didn't come a long time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she just picked up the phone calling me and said, Dean, I'm inviting you to Shabbat's dinner, to Friday, Friday night dinner. And I was like, who is this lady? She never gave up on me. She doesn't know me. And she's inviting me to her house with her kids. Who is this lady? <laughs> and I had a quick talk to myself. And I told to myself, then if you don't jump on the train now, it will leave the station and you will never get on it. You will always have your excuses. You will always have your test exams. You will always have your jobs. You will always have something that's causing you from like not going to church. And so I did went to her house. Uh, well, she is a Baptist and I brought a whiskey to her house <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> Terrible times. <laughs> but she was so nice to me and she was so kind. And I didn't know what Baptist means at the time, right? <laughs> but we have a wonderful dinner. And then she asked me how I came to faith. And ex I explained what I did up until this point. And then she told me, Dean, tomorrow we have a meeting, like service in a, in a church. Are you coming? And I said to myself, Dean, if you're not jumping on this train right now, on the wagon right now, it will leave the station and you will never go. So I did. The next morning, I went to church. And the first thing I heard was open the eyes of my heart. And it opened the eyes of my heart. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Singing to God. <laughs> it was amazing. I love worship. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I hear this guy, and he's from Brazil. And he's praying in Portuguese. And for me, it made so much sense. Because when I was in Brazil, in my uh, trip after the army, I went to a synagogue to pray. And there were Brazilian Jews, and they prayed in Hebrew. But they, their Hebrew was broken and so terrible that I didn't understand what they sang. So after the service, I asked the, the, the rabbi, well, do you understand what you read? And he said, no. Do you know what you pray upon? Not a clue. So why do you do it? Well, it's tradition. <laughs> and I understood it. Like, we never do things because we understand. We do it because it's our tradition. And this guy, now in Israel, is Brazilian. And he speaks with, with God with his own tongue, which is Portuguese. Of course, God understands him, right? He doesn't need to speak Hebrew for God to understand. He was speaking with God as much as I was speaking with God every day when I was going to sleep and saying the Lord's Prayer and speaking with God. I was sure he's saying the same things. So when he finished his prayer, I said amen, not knowing what he said. Uh, but I said amen because I knew he was speaking uh, from his heart to God. And so I loved church and I went to church and home group religiously uh, uh, for a year. A whole year I went. I didn't miss one time. Uh, and it was amazing, uh, amazing time, things were happening. But after a year, there was this pastor from, from the States, and he came and gave a sermon about forgiveness. And the sermon was divided into two, forgiveness to others and forgiveness for yourself. And the part with forgiveness to others, I really enjoyed it because I had people, I need to hear like that I need to forgive them, right? So... Uh, thank God I did forgive those people. 
But when he turned the, the, the message about forgiveness for yourself, I didn't like it too much. Because back in the army, I was uh, interrogator. And I could do a lot of things, being a special unit interrogator. And I was using it to be the usually uh, bad me. I was evil inside of me. Not because of the army, because I was bad. And the army just allowed me to, to express it. I was even evil before the army. And so I never thought I'm going to go to the good place, let's, so, let's say it that way. So right now, God gave me conscience, and I know I was evil the whole time, because back in the days, I never felt a, a slight bump in my, in my wing, because I didn't thought I was evil. I, do, I didn't care about evil. And now I know I, I'm evil. That doesn't mean I belong to the, to the good place. No. So if anyone's ask me, what is the truth? I will point him to Jesus and I'll say, here's the truth of the, in the living, in the way, right? But I know at the end of my line, I won't go to Jesus because I don't deserve to be with Jesus. And I was sad and I was furious and, and I was accepting that I'm not going to go there. And now this pastor talking about to forgive yourself. How could I, knowing how, how much evil was inside of me? And now this lady who never gave up on me, remember her, she was coming to me and she said, Dean, I'm see, I see something is wrong with you. Do you care to share it? And I said, yes, why not? And I told her some of the horrific things I've done, some of the worst thing you can imagine. And she was listening. I had her complete uh, attention. And I was thinking she was about to tell me something connected to this. But all of a sudden she said, Dean, are you believing in God? I was shocked. I was like, of course I believe in God. Why am I here for like a year now? And she said, Dean, are you really believe the word of God to be the truth and nothing but the truth? And I was like, what are those old questions are coming from? Where are they coming from? Of course I believe. Samara, you know me. I believe in God. And then she said, so how come can't you understand that he forgave you? And at the same very moment, I felt the presence again. And he was touching my heart and he said, now do you understand? And all of a sudden, I understand that God actually forgave me. And he loved me and he lived everything just to forgive this little lamb that was straying away from the, the herd, right? And I, I understand for the first time of my life, the love of God and the forgiveness he already gave to me. And all I need to is to receive it. And I received the, the Lord this day and not a year before on this day, I received the Lord to my life as a savior. And I would start crying. I, was, I didn't know what to do with myself. And then I made it a personal mission to me. To proclaim the good news of Jesus. The, the gospel to the Jews who doesn't know about him. Because 99% of them never saw a Jew who believes in Jesus. They never heard the name Jesus. So it's my mission and my fellow people in Jews for Jesus to proclaim the gospel and we relentlessly pursue God's plan of salvation to the Jewish people. And this is my testimony. This is his testimony. Thank you. Oh, to find it. Do you have it there, Dean? You okay? I need to pick up my Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Open my Bible. Oh, yeah. Um, let's stand together. I, I just asked Dean if he wouldn't mind praying the ironic blessing over us uh, from Numbers. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. And just receive it from, from our, our brother. It's just really good. I can actually sing it. Yeah. We have a sing for it. Yeah. A song for it. It goes like this. Yevarechecha veishmerecha yevarechecha Ya eradonai panavelecha vichuneka Veya semlecha Shalom, shalom 
ויעשם לך שלום שלום Blessed be you.